Good evening YouTube. Bill number three down here. What we got up on the bench today is a two driving 10. Uh, it had PP100s in it. I took those out and put HD2879s in it. And to get into this thing, uh, a boy kind of close by to me brought this to me to fix. And uh, it had three blown transistors in it. And he told me it was a new amp. And, uh, you know, it hadn't been keyed but two or three times. And he sent it back to the builder and sent it back, got got it back, keyed it two or three times, and, you know, it was it. And then he waited and waited to see if it's going to, guy that built it was going to do anything, and says he couldn't get a hold to him. I don't know. Uh, maybe he got disgusted and didn't try. I don't know. Uh, but... You know, it seems sometimes when people get these kind of big boxes here, they they have a, like a Antron 99 or, you know, a piece of RG8 coax or Mini 8 or something. And they try to go from like a two-tube Elkin to something like this. And, I mean, I don't know this to be the case, but I don't know. I've, I've not been to his house. I don't really know his name. But, uh. He brought this down here to be fixed, and and I fixed the issues on it. Uh, he gave me $400 cash money to start on it. So I bought 12 new transistors, HD2879s, bought all new caps, all new caps on it, uh, bought some new resistors for it. It had... Uh, some little one watt I'm guessing resistors there I don't know they're right much littler than a two watt and it had uh, these resistors here was on the output of the amp and the input was two watt the same thing I put back in it was two watt put three watt here and uh, it had the power wires run down through here and I got those up out of the way and picked the box up and put some tubing around the uh, wire so it wouldn't get chafed or anything and tucked it back up behind there but I had it loose and it would slide out and I tucked them back down and I slid, slid back over to it and put my screws back down in it and screw back in it over there and over here and uh but he said this thing was staged when he got it. So the two pill were run separate from the 10 pill. And it shows where it was a switch in there. But I don't know that to be true. I don't know. I'm just going by what he told me. But it had the uh, relay back out for that and been cut out. And when I took the top off the box, it was a straight 10 pill. The two pill was then been unhooked. So I don't know whether, you know, he, uh, they unhooked the driver so he could drive it with something else. I don't know, but this is the way it is when I got it and this things that I changed around on it. So I got the power wires and all the wires out between there and put them tucked up under here, put all new transistors in it. Like I said, he gave me $400 to buy parts for it and, uh, I bought all new transistors, which was over, a little over three hundred dollars. And mind, mind you, this is he gave me four hundred dollars of his money to work on this amp, nothing else. So I bought twelve new transistors, caps, two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. 29 caps. And the reason I didn't put metal clads here is because the metal clads I got was around 980. And I really need about a 1,000 puff here. 
and if you tie a 2 5 on the scale that comes way closer or if not a little bit over 1000 is the reason I use this and these will be sufficient enough because this is in two peel sections two peel two peel two peel two peel two peel and that's two peel should drive them when these come off go down through your coaxes come up here then it gets combined it so these are still working like a two peel section uh so i don't think you build up enough heat they build up that much heat to really bother these a lot uh, but anyways getting back to the amp when it was brought to me so i focused mostly on this part of it because like i said I, the amp was new so uh you know i'm assuming the power supply is good and uh well i kind of assumed wrong because i got the amp up and working i run it off my power supply i had a six gauge wire coming off of here to for my hot a uh ground wire coming off of here to my power supply and uh run off my power supply to start with during testing and everything make sure that everything was tuned because I have a 360 amp power supply and I didn't think it would drag that much but by the time I got line loss it's done coming down from 14.7 to about 13.9 through line loss through these connectors and everything but now these connectors like the ground wire it goes from here goes around and connects on this side too that's the way I done those so I'm trying to get all the amperage I can through them. That's a piece of eight gauge wire run up and run to this uh, one alt cable. But uh, it did have a little line loss. But getting back to the amp, I started checking out the power supplies as the wires was laid up here. It was laid up. I had them all pulled off and uh, started checking the voltage on them. But this one didn't work, and this one didn't work. The lights wouldn't even come on on them. And I checked all the wires, make sure it was getting voltage, two was getting voltage, and uh, called the customer and told him that two of the power supplies weren't working, and he had a fit. This man's, I think he's up in his 70s, he sounded like a three year old for a few minutes there. Uh, but anyways, uh, I told him I had to, because the voltage on like this one was like 23 volts, and it was they were all summed together with the resistors come down through here, and it was tied to the board, even still. Well, this one was, running, was reading 23 volts, this one was reading like 20 volts, this one was reading like 13, this one was reading like 14. This one right here was reading like 10. It was just all erratic. Well, I took this one out to start with and this one. Because it was about the easiest ones to get out. And I took the top off of this one that was here. And the wires is cut on the transformer. Well, I figured out how they got cut right there. I think you can see them. I'm looking through the phone. Uh, but the wires was cut. They sat up in here like this. And had a screw. Had a piece of phenolic to hold the, to uh, hold them together. Like I got them strapped here. It had screws down through it. And the screw had went down through here. And got into that transformer. And then by the time I got around to pulling all these out. I checked this one which was over here in that box and the guy marked them or any thought I was going to keep them or something like that, I don't know but he marked them with a black magic marker uh, I don't want them uh, but anyways this is the ones that come out of it like I said two of them was bad so I told him he had to buy new power supplies and he liked to have a fit but after he got down here and seen what they was doing, he said, yeah, go ahead, get power supplies. So he gave me the money to buy the power supplies. 
And as of yet, you know, I've not charged him any labor or anything on this. He paid me $400 for this by the time I ended up buying all new caps, all new transistors. The transistors alone was over $300. And uh, by the time I bought caps and that, that ate up that $400 right there. So uh, when he got ill with me that day, I told him oh, he'd just come down here and pick it up. Didn't know me anything if he wanted to be like that. And I got a call back about 10 minutes later and he didn't change his tune. And so he came down here and I wanted him to check it over. And I showed him the voltages on every one of them. And uh, he uh, wanted power supplies. So I put them in there for him. And... This thing's up and going now. I'm going to do an output test of it. Maybe I shouldn't have said that, but I don't even, uh, but uh, it's pretty much what happened. Uh, sometimes customers get a little mad at things that, you know, I, I didn't build this amp. This is not me. I didn't build it. And I'm not, war I'm not the one supposed to warranty any of this. This is not on me. This is, I'm a different person. I didn't take your initial money. So this, this ain't on me. And this reason I'm saying this is because, you know, he might take this thing home and hook it up to the same antenna and pow. I don't know. But as of yet, this is a video of it to document the way it, the way it has went. By God is my witness. Uh, you know, this is all the events that took place on this thing. I don't know what's going to happen to it afterwards. Look, people, if you run these amps, you got to have coax and antennas sufficient enough to run something like this. You got to have good coax. And if I was investing in something like this, I would surely enough invest in a piece of coax. At least a piece of coax and clean. Clean my antenna. If I had an aluminum antenna, I'd clean it. Or if I was running an Antron 99, I know not to run this on an Antron 99. Now, IMAX 2000, I don't know. I'd, I'd be iffy about that. I try to get me a good antenna that I know would handle this. These are a different game than running these little two pills and four pills when it comes to wattage. So y'all keep that in mind. Well, I got it plugged up. It's 220. I'm turning on. These fans are pretty loud. Get Cab the cabinet on ain't too bad. Kind of dampens it down a little bit. But this is my stock little Cobra 29 with the modulation turned up in it. It does about 11 watts peak. And you ain't gonna be able to take pay no attention to my dozy. Something that went wrong with it. But I'm gonna do this on the bird. I have got a peak kit in this thing, but it's one of the ones from Florida. I don't know if it's any better, any worse. But uh, right now it ain't on. That's on. The light on. Right now it's off. And it's in the center position. It so says it's got a multiplier in it. So it's 2500 slug. Five, it's 500. The 10 is 1000. And it's going to do about 1000, 1200. So it should end up about right over here somewhere around a thousand more. This output test on it, it's the RMS. Like I said, the peak kit is off. Turn the amp on. Get this thing stable. Audio! Up around a thousand. Let me look at the meter instead of my camera. Oh, dee! She's doing pretty good. 
That's why I was going to uh, average. And I'm going to turn, just turn the uh, peak kit on. It's still in the one times position. It's just going to be reading 2500 peak. And you're reading that top scale. 5 is 500, 10 is 1000, 1500, 2000, 2500 all the way over. This is peak. Oh, dio! It's about 2200. And everything seems to be running pretty good. I think I have a wire that usually feeds these uh, tops here. I think I got a piece of wire that's uh, kind of getting into that fan. The way they lay in there, and it's kind of like this. When they hook up to the board, and I think it's the wire getting there. Uh, tap that thing and it'll quit. I'm going to pull that back up out there and see if I can get that wire out. But you hear that rattling a little bit every now and again. When that fan ramps up. Audio. Alright. This is my reflect coming out of the box. Back to the radio. This is going up. Going into this here. That's a 5 watt slug. Because that, that made it last, we'll reflect power going back to the radio. 5 watt slip. In reverse. Audio. It's a little over half a watt. Reflect power. This reflect. Audio. Audio. Feet. Box is doing pretty good. And go back to the turn the uh, peak kit off, light went off. This is 2500 watt scale on RMS. Oh, dee oh. So, you're doing pretty good. Audio. Everything seems like it's running good and cool. It's got plenty of heat sink on it. And there she is. So if you hear it, listen. That little high supply right there's got a little wire. It's uh hitting that thing and I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But we'll pull that back up out there and with that screw down two on the bottom, pop it up. If I can get it up out a little bit out of the way and check it out. But there it is up and going. So, uh, you seen it working here? And uh, please, people, if you get kind, if you get power like this, you need to uh, upgrade that antenna and upgrade that coax from that Mini Eight, and uh, especially when it's old coax. If you're gonna spend the money for this, spend the money for the antenna. Yeah, tell and coax and everything too. So I don't know what the problem was on this, but I don't know. It shows it kind of sounds like maybe something on that end, as far as antenna and stuff like that. I don't know. I'm guessing. Uh, but yeah, make sure you run good antenna, good coax. All right, have a good one. Still number three down here in the Carolinas. Later.